Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Today we're going to have a look at a very small travel router, the GLI Net Barrel AX. The Barrel AX is a Wi Fi 6 router you can use at home or for travel. Seeing as I travel quite often, it's about time that I bought one. The Barrel AX has one 2.5 gigabit WAM port and one 1 gigabit LAN port, a USB 3, a USB C to power a test button and a toggle button. It also has two retractable external Wi-Fi antennas. The max speed for the 2.4 gigahertz is 574 megabits per second and the five gigahertz is 2,402 megabits per second. The Barrel AX could handle up to 70 clients and could act as a VPN client or server. It also uses WPA3 for Wi-Fi security. It has AdGuard Home and DNS over HTTPS and DNS over TLS. Now, a few people have asked me why I'm not using the Ubiquiti Unify Express. With the Unify Express, it only allows physical WAN connections. In a lot of hotels, you may not be able to get to that physical cable. So the Barrel AX, that's where it comes in place. You could bridge the Wi-Fi connection even if it's running a captive portal. There's a couple different ways that we could set the Barrel AX up. We could plug Ethernet directly into the LAN port and go to 192.168.8.1, or you could connect through wireless. You could also do this on your phone. I'm gonna do it on my computer, but you could see the wireless network right here, GL-MT3000-E71. That is the wireless SSID that it's broadcasting right now for us to set up. But I'm going to go into a web browser and I'm going to type in 192.168.8.1. Now we're at the initial setup and it's going to ask us to choose our language. I do speak English, so that's what I'm going to say. And we're going to press next. We need to put in a new admin password for this. I'm going to put in an admin password. It's going to prevent weak passwords and then we're going to apply. Now we're at the admin portal for the Barrel AX and we can see that there's no ethernet cable detected. If my hotel room does have ethernet, we will be connecting direct to that, but we're going to bridge with the wireless network. We could see the repeater and I'm going to press on connect. It's going to show us all of the different SSIDs that are around us. We're not going to be going to a captive portal, but I will test that if the hotel has it. So we could see this top one, it's Dolores. That is one of my networks and it is a mixed environment. I'm gonna click it and then we're gonna join. We need to put the password in for that network. I'm gonna leave everything else at the default. Now you can see that it's trying to connect to that Dolores Wi-Fi SSID and it will take a second before connecting. Now we're up and running through that wireless bridge. I'm gonna bring up a command prompt and show you that we could reach out to the internet. I'm gonna ping google.ca and it does give me those replies. We can see the gateway information, the IP address, DNS, BSSID, and the MAC address. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over to system. We can see that there's a warning over here and it's asking us for our time zone. Right now, I'm currently in Toronto or near Toronto, so we're gonna wanna put it to that. Okay, and we've changed. It's now Friday, November 15th at 8, 19 a.m. I am going to be going to Costa Rica, so this time zone will change when I get there. The next thing that I wanna do is check for firmware updates. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click on upgrade, and then we can see that there's a new version 4.6.9. So we're gonna to click to install. The firmware update is now completed and we could tell that the UI changed a little bit. At the top, we could see that we have this repeater and then we have our LAN client, which is one that's this computer plugged directly in. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my wireless networks. So we'll click over on wireless and we could see the five gigahertz for our Wi-Fi or normal Wi-Fi, and then we have a guest Wi-Fi. I won't be setting up any guest Wi-Fi as I'll just be using this. You'd see right now what the SSID is. If we hover over this, it will show us the QR code. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change that. So we're gonna go down and we're gonna click on modify. I'm gonna end up calling this vacation time. We're gonna do WPA2 pre-shared key, but you can do WPA3 if you'd like and then I'm gonna give it a new password. If you don't want your SSID shown, you could turn it off and then we have our Wi-Fi mode. So we have 11A, N, A, C, and A, X, and our bandwidth in our channel, we can't change as we're using it as that wireless repeater. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply. Now I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna do the same thing for the 2.4. I'm gonna call it vacation time, but I'm gonna give it a 2.4 at the end. In the hotel room, I really should be connecting to the five gigahertz all the time as it's not that big of a room. We're gonna do pre-shared key WPA2 again, and I'm gonna give it a password and press apply. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is our VPN options. We have VPN dashboard, open VPN client, open VPN server, WireGuard client, WireGuard server, and then Tor. All we're gonna be looking at mostly is the VPN clients. 
I'm going to be connecting to NordVPN doing this. So let's go ahead and go to OpenVPN client. Now it says request the VPN configuration file from your VPN service provider. And they do have more than just NordVPN. You could select whoever you use, but this one is built in. So I'm going to click on NordVPN. Here we need to put our username and our password, which we find on our NordVPN login. And I'll show you where to do that. We're at the dashboard of NordVPN. And if we click on this NordVPN on the left-hand side and scroll down, we could see this manual setup. I'm going to set up NordVPN manually. From here, we could see in the middle that we have our service credentials. I'm going to click on that. We need to verify my email to be able to get these credentials. And once that's done, we could see the username and then we could see the password. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to copy the username, go back to my barrel AX. We're going to paste that in and then we're going to copy the password and paste it in as well. We're going to save and continue. And then we're going to select our location. I'm going to go over UDP and then we have max of per location. I'm going to say that maybe we're in United States. So I'll keep scrolling down and we'll go to Los Angeles and then we'll go ahead and we'll apply that. Now we could see that we have 10 different servers that we could connect to. If we want to connect through NordVPN, all we need to do is enable it. So I'll go ahead and I'll enable. Okay, that NordVPN is now enabled and you could see it's given an IP address of 152.89.204.156. Every single client that's connected to this will be routed through that VPN. If you want to turn the VPN off, all you need to do is hit this toggle switch. So that's how easy it is to set up the so on so privacy VPN. But what if we want to connect to services back at our home, like hitting our Synology NAS to use Plex? Well, we could also do that with an open VPN client. I'm going to show you how to do it, but I'm going to do the server on my UDM Pro Max. On my UDM Pro Max, I've clicked on VPN and then we're going to go over to VPN server. I have selected open VPN and I'm going to give it a name of travel server. We could see the server address and then we could see user authentication. We don't have any users created yet, but I'm going to create a new user. This user, I'm going to give the name of Cody and then I'm going to put a password in. We now have the configuration file ready for us to download and I'm going to click on the download link. Now with the OpenVPN configuration file downloaded, we're going to go back over to OpenVPN on our Barrel AX and I'm going to click on new group. I'm going to drag and drop that file in right here. Okay, it says upload successful. Now we need to put that username and the password in for the user that I created. So it's going to be Cody for the username and then I'll type in my password. Now we can see the configuration file has been added. We have the name of the travel server and then the IP address. But before I start it, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to try to ping my NAS and we shouldn't be able to reach it. So I'm going to ping 192.168.1.121 and you could see that it's not going through. Now let's start the service for the OpenVPN client. I'm gonna click on the three dots and we're gonna press on start. Now we can see that the travel server is green and it's connected. Let's bring open another command line and we're gonna press the up arrow and then press enter. And now you could see that we could reach my NAS and we could do all the services on it like Plex. That's pretty much all I'm going to be using my Barrel AX for, but they do have quite a lot of other things. We have these plugins, we have dynamic DNS if we need to use that, we have good cloud and we have network storage if you want to use this as like a little file server. We also have AdGuard Home, which does some sort of ad blocking, and then we have parental control. I'm not going to have any children on this network, so I'm going to leave this off. We could also do zero tier and tail scale. If you're interested to see a video on that, leave a comment below. We also have our network where we could look at port forwarding. We could do multi WAN, LAN, guest network. We could do our DNS network mode, IPv6. And we also have IGMP snooping and our NAT settings and network acceleration. Now, one really cool thing about this is this toggle button setting. So let's click on it. We have that little toggle button that you could see right here, which we could set to either be on or we could be off and we could set different functions for it. Right now, there's no function at all. But if I hit the drop down menu, you could see AdGuard Home on or we could see our OpenVPN client. So the OpenVPN client would be great if you want to turn your NordVPN on and off just by using that little switch. And that's going to be my video on the GLI Net Barrel AX. And I'm pretty happy with this device and the size of it. I haven't used it at a hotel yet, but we are going to Costa Rica today and I will be testing it out fully. And I will do another video on my experience with it. It comes in at a good cost as well. I bought this for $133 Canadian over on Amazon. I will have an Amazon affiliate link down in the description below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.